Hi, this is Dave Jack, Superintendent of Falkirk County Public Schools with another video update. Um, this video update is primarily focused on uh, technology and then synchronous and asynchronous instruction. I'm going to start with the technology piece. There's some new information to share and some of this information is repeat information. But I want to make sure you have it and um, are sort of aware of what's going on, what the timelines are. Um, we've, we've had a lot more devices requested uh, this fall than we did in the in the spring um, which uh, is manageable but what it may mean is that device distribution begins this Wednesday runs through Friday at individual schools it may mean that we have another round of device distribution next week and the reason for that is uh, the number of um, multiple student families or uh, households that have students at, at various uh, grade levels like elementary and middle or middle and high. So folks have requested multiple devices. It may mean that you receive one device and we ask you to come back next week when we uh, have those Windows devices ready to go. The Windows devices are laptops. So um, that, that will let you know Friday um, what the situation there is or your child's school will let you know. But worst case scenarios, uh, you may have to come back uh, next week to get the device, which is another reason why we sort of designated the week of the 24th as an orientation. Teachers reach out to students, uh, figure out what the students' needs are, figure out what the students or their home uh, internet capabilities are, and, uh, and then we'll troubleshoot from there. Now, as far as internet access, I want to share a few things. One, uh, we, we continue to have uh, uh, a quantity of portable hotspots for families to check out if they need them. And again, these devices, the hotspots that we have um, in our schools to hand out are really only as good as the cell service that you receive. So please keep that in mind. But in addition to the, um, the, those hotspots, we'll also have those buses, those 10 buses out at various locations. And I'll get to the locations in just a minute. We'll have those out in various locations. In addition, to, in addition to, to that, we've added significant bandwidth at eight of our schools, which we've identified eight schools uh, who are, which are located in locations that may not have the best internet service. So we, we empowered them, made, made that, that signal more powerful in the event that parents or students want to park out the front of the, the building and, and gain internet access that way. Um, next. Uh, we're working with the county. Um, the county will also be providing uh, similar uh, service as far as the portable hotspots are much more powerful than the ones we have in the buses, but there will be in various locations around the county. And um, all that, all of this information and those locations and whatnot will be provided uh, by this Friday. We'll send this out to you, let you know where these places are, where you can access internet if you have no service or just really poor service in your home and worst case scenario last but not least if you have nothing and i've, I've actually heard from one uh one guardian who has said I, I have no internet i have no devices i have nothing but a phone and um so with with that parent that guardian we're working with them to provide them with thumb drives with materials on them that they can access home. Is that ideal? Absolutely not. But that's, again, that is the worst case scenario. We'll have that information out for you on Friday. Um, as far as uh, synchronous and asynchronous instruction, um, there's, there's most definitely some confusion out there about what asynchronous instruction is. I think people understand what synchronous, synchronous is, not so much asynchronous. So, um, uh, our PIO is creating a video uh, as we speak that describes the sort of in and ins and outs of asynchronous versus synchronous instruction, what the differences are, what the opportunities are within each in each format, um, and so expect that that, that uh, video soon. But I wanted to mention something too because I'm getting a lot of feedback about why only two days in high school of synchronous and the other two days of asynchronous, and why is that, et cetera, et cetera. I want to point something out to you that's very important. We, we had 944 teachers this summer uh, through July uh, participate in 400, over 400 
professional development events designed to help them uh, enhance their ability to provide instruction virtually for a grand total of 19,673 hours. I'm telling you this because I want you to make sure you understand teachers are working overtime to prepare themselves to provide a really good product, instructional product, virtually synchronous and asynchronous. And it's, a, it's important to, to point that out. And uh, the teachers have worked very hard and they're working very hard in these first two weeks leading up to the week of the 24th to prepare. And in many respects, preparing for asynchronous instruction is more time consuming and more difficult than providing synchronous instruction, particularly if it's done right. And that's most definitely our expectation. Um, and folks are gonna have to stretch. And it's, it's not uh, accurate to look at asynchronous and think, well, I'm just sitting a kid in front of, and down in front of a computer learning and download worksheets, et cetera. No, there's, there's many ways to instruct asynchronously that reflect 21st century uh, expectations of, of employees, for example. And I'm, I'm telling you this because this is actually an opportunity. We've been nibbling away for years at the let's teach differently, let's teach and model 21st century values and expectations. This is an opportunity to do that in real time. It is, it is not necessarily the best way to instruct just to have the teacher up there, sage on the stage, teaching, 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 and the, and the kids are kind of passive receptors sitting back and taking it all in. There's gotta be other opportunities for them to be involved in creating projects, creating videos, um, participating in Blackboard discussion boards uh, to practice the things that they're being taught, to complete paper pencil activities. There are plenty of opportunities during that asynchronous time for kids to do that thing. And that's what teachers are prepared to do. And I wanna make sure folks understand that it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to allow those kids to do those things that we would expect in a 21st class, first century classroom to do. We expect kids to be able to do. And this is a way to get there. A very unconventional way with a pandemic, but it is an opportunity. And uh, it's important we work together and we ask you to stretch as parents, we're stretching as instructors. We ask kids to stretch uh, also in terms of, doesn't necessarily mean you're just sitting back and listening to a teacher. You're actually involved, you're creating, you're writing, uh, you're creating videos, you're involved in a discussion board. I teach virtually uh, for George Washington University. Those are the exact kind of things I do. I have one hour a week of asynchronous instruction. The rest of the time, excuse me, of synchronous instruction, the rest of the time is asynchronous. That's what we expect. So I wanna be really clear about that moving forward. Um, last, um, and, and by the way, this is the same model we used for summer school and it was very successful. And so we're trying to replicate this through in the fall and preparing teachers for that, that, that summer virtual instruction was difficult but it was very well done and we are expecting the fall to look the same. Last but not least, Thursday, next Thursday at 7 p.m. we're gonna be hosting a webinar for parents and uh, Tara, the PI, our PIO will be giving this information out to you. But um, the, the webinar will be 7 p.m. Thursday. It'll be an opportunity for parents to log in and we'll be uh, soliciting questions from parents uh, beginning uh, after uh, Monday's first day of virtual because I think we, we think the questions will be different during that week as we begin the, uh, the, the uh, virtual piece. And then um, you'll be able to log in on Thursday. We'll answer these questions in real time. And uh, we, you'll have myself, Mr. Warner, Mr. Graham, uh, Mr. McDonald. We'll have, you know, all of us will be there to answer questions and, and participate. So a little long-winded. Uh, I'll finish with this. As I told new teachers um, recently, you know, this is this is all of our first year teaching in some respects. This is this is brand new and it, it is it's like being the first year teacher, superintendent, principal, etc. for all of us. And we got to rise to that challenge and we're going to rise to the challenge. Does that, does that mean we're not going to have hiccups along the way? Of course we are. Of course we're going to have hiccups along the way. But we're going to overcome this. And, uh, and and provide something that is more 21st century-esque 
than what we were doing <clears throat> during the regular school year last year. All right, so that's it. Everybody hang in there, and we'll talk again soon. Thanks.